Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzles. You're watching my channel, Mizzle 14, and I'm here doing a view of Ambitions, Season 1, Episode 3. There was another good episode, so let's jump right into it. Alright, so, we got the Mayor Lancaster with his, um, I think his bodyguard or security intel, telling him about the mistress going to be there somewhere. So he was like freaking out. I was like, what? He didn't want nobody to know her being around there. So he was freaking calling her while... She was sitting waiting for somebody. He was calling her and calling her. She put her bag down and she wasn't um, picking up the phone. And I guess she got a vibration or something like that because she didn't hear it. I was like, damn, how can you not hear a vibration? Whatever. So she wasn't hearing the phone. She was sitting there waiting. In the midst of it, we thinking, all right, so that at the same time, Marva was talking to Miss Manning. So apparently, apparently Marva was talking about her. Her, her affair with the Lancaster. Basically, he, she noticed that they've been doing any kickbacks, taking kickback, kickbacks, contract skimming, and everything. And if I find out what's going on and you get down and you're going to trouble, you will go down for this. So if you protected anyone else, you will fall for it first. So, and this man is saying, I don't know what you're talking about, all that stuff like that. Now, I have been well with my um, job. I do my job well. Find a pound and doing thing with a co worker is fine upon, but it's not illegal. And um, it's like all that extra stuff. She said, I'm plenty I'm saying you have something with the Lancaster, but you decided to talk about your freaking um contract on your, your record, your job record. And basically tell her, Listen, you don't have to worry about anything else, girl, but you do need to worry about me. I'm always tell her that. I was like, Oh, okay. So, you know, Miss Manny is not having that because she was like, Uh uh. And Miss Manning went to tell Evan Lancaster and tell him that, listen, she's on us. Like, I'm always the freaking U.S. District or whatever attorney, so like that. And she is on us and hard body, so we need to cover our asses. He said, don't worry about it. I think it's going to be cool. I said, okay, cool. I like that. So while Lancaster, Mayor Lancaster was walking, he saw Bella. Bella was there meeting him for a business interview. Now, he thinks that, damn, she should have sh showed up to my job like that. Like, what if I could see you? What if I know people know you? They could speculate and everything. But she said, I'm only here to do a business venture. So, it's nothing real about that. So, she was really there with her business folder. She got all dressed. And just want that freaking spot. She want a concession at um, a stand at, at near airport or something like that. So, she could sell her clothing and stuff like that. And then get clients. And she said it would be a bit attractive for her to get that. And being that she fucking in school and the freaking mayor. She think he could get pulls for her to get that concession stand. So, he said, no, that's not a good idea. We need to hold off like that. No, I don't think I, uh, it's not that I don't believe you. But it's not like right now and stuff. So, he probably dismissed her. But while he dismissed her, she grabbed this thing. And it's like, oh. She was like, who? And he know, he's like, she said, this could go the easy way, and this could go the hard way. But we both know how to go. So get my concession stand that I want. And that's it. And walked out. I said, girl, you think you, you hold all the cards. All right. So later on, Mayor Lancaster met with Bella at her apartment. And um, he confronted her. He said, listen, this is too much. You think about the concession stand. He said, oh, yeah, I read it. And he have a good business model and stuff like that. But he said we need to calm down. Like it's, it's heat is getting heat on him. It's too hot for him. It's too many eyes on him. So we need to cool it off right now. I can't see you as much as I want to see you. So she said, "You breaking up on me? You breaking up on me? What do you mean? We were with Rakeem. I got your son, and you can't be breaking up on me like that. Ah, uh, this is not gonna happen like that." And he said, "Calm that, cool down. We're not letting go. So, but we just need to separate for a little bit." So Roderick was on his way. So Evan have a feeling, have a feel type of way about Roderick, because that's the man that Bella is like front and dating with, because she can't get with Evan like how she wants to be. So he don't like that. So Roderick came in. He got in the room. He said, "Get rid of him. Get rid of him now." She talked to the door. She was playing off. She said, "Oh, I'm just not feeling so good. I'm not. I have a bad day and stuff like that." He said, "Oh, can okay, I make a deal to you?" And I'm sorry. I don't want to help you and basically they proceeded to have a sex so, you know bella did that for a spite she knows she was doing because she know ever was there so she said let me have sex with him so get him on under his skin and all that craziness so she proceeded to have sex with him while evan's in the room evan's sort of freaking looking at the thing, um door and freaking like he's like pissed off about it and it's like come on he said pissed off 
about it. So I was like, wow. And so after they finished they doing the, he said, you sure I can't spend the night? And I said, she said, I'm sure, I'm sure. So he walked out. Ever came out. He said, this is foul. You do that shit to me and all that stuff. She said, well, you pick up with me. He said, uh, uh-uh, uh, all right, whatever, all that stuff. But you know you on, so like that. So he walked out and he was in feelings. I said, well, you about to cry, Evan? You a whole married man having an affair and then you in your own feelings because Bella is doing her and fucking Roderick in the room while you was in the room. Even though you do got a son together. And he was in his feelings, so he was like, be hot. Evan, be hot. So he walked out and Roderick saw him. So, you know, Roderick, I feel like, t- feel type of way about that. So I guess he put in two together. Two two together that he saw her walking out the freaking soaking saw him walking out Bella House. So you know he not liking that at all. So that was that. I like so then um so Stephanie was to talk to Greg Peter, cause Greg Peter was talking to somebody in her office and he was talking to her recklessly. And she said, Sure, I don't know what to tell you all that like leave me alone, <laughs> basically. And Stephanie said, Oh, don't worry about it, I got him, I got him. She said, Thank you. So talk to Greg Peters. And he basically went that out of the spot. He said that one place is the only place that is preventing him and his investors into getting that lot. And she is stopping him so they get really antsy and not liking this. So he really trying to do any means necessary to get that loft. Get that spot. So Stephanie said, you know what? Don't worry about it, boo-boo. I got this. I got this. I can handle that. I go get this done. I can get this place maybe before my father even come out of his vacation to come back home. And he said, oh, I like you. Maybe I was with doing the wrong, uh, maybe I was messing with the wrong Carlisle. It's like that. But, cause he said Grace was working with the father Carlisle, Stephen Carlisle, to get the restaurant, to get the spot. At the same time, his wife, Irene, was also sending that goon to scare, excuse me, to scare Thelma, uh, Thelma Rondell to sell. So, they was on it. They on board and trying to get that restaurant. And they all doing that to help Evan to get to the governor. If he get this spot and all that stuff, it will propel him to the governor. Because I guess Greg Peters is helping him get to that spot if he get this um, restaurant. So, that was that. So, Stephanie Guy said she going to handle it. So, how she handled it, she went to see, see in Lancaster. And she was talking to him a little, little flirting and all a little back and forth and flattery. And he said, you have to do all these things. Tell me what's going on. You're sweet talking me. And she took off her jacket and he saw like that. She said, listen, I know you're trying to, uh, know you have a hard reservations, but I can't believe that people haven't been talking to you since you as his business, as a business standpoint, you as the sole owner. So I don't know why everybody's going through Rondell. Like she's the person who can make decisions when you're the sole owner of it. So... I kind of wish we could just have a sit down meeting and talk to you. He said, we're here right now. So what's going on? She said, it's an offer right now. And I don't even want dad to tell you, but this offer will be really great for you and stuff. So he saw the money. He said, oh, no, I didn't even know about no money and stuff like that. She said, oh, well, she ain't trying to tell you. Trying to keep all this stuff. She said, she's lying to me. Keep a hold of me. This money could be great. So Rondell came. She said, what's going on and stuff? And she knows she don't really care for Stephanie. So she was like, he said, why, Dad, why you didn't tell me no money? She said, Dad, because I ain't trying to stop you from doing that because this lady was trying to get the thing and work with the white man to try to take over or stuff like that. So I'm not having that. And he said, why you don't tell me this? Because at the end of the day, it's not your decision. It's my decision. You should let me know about this. And basically getting in the head. So, you know, Rondell and seeing Lancaster is in odds with over this place. And... I was like, wow. So, Rondell went to see Evan about it. And he said, listen, Dad's thinking about selling and all that stuff, and we need to get things going, and we need to put a stop to this. And he said he go talk to the father and stuff like that. But Stephanie was like, uh-uh, don't think that's happening. Uh-uh. And, you know, Rondell was like, get this bony-ass bitch, get out the highway, way, go somewhere. I'm talking to my brother about this, and you don't need to be involved. And he said, oh, you trying to get me out of my own damn house? Tell me what you do in my house? Please. So I got upstairs, and Rondell laughed out. And Stephanie said, uh oh, i I'll do what I have to do. So, miss me with that boo. Kissing on the cheek and well upstairs. 
All right, so everyone to talk to CN Lancaster, it just basically was like, CN Lancaster said, listen, it's best to do this because I know how the neighborhood is turning. It's turning to every drug dealer is in the streets. It's coming in a bad neighborhood. Investors are taking over. So let's let it be. Let it be. It is what it is. Get the freaking money and let's move out. Let's move out now and where um, before it gets too late. So Evan Bliss is telling him, he's saying, you do what you got to do, daddy. You want to sell, you want to keep it. And, but just know that Vondell is being taken care of. She, I got her. So don't have to worry about that. But we, at the end of the day, we have a hard time not even saying love you, but we need to know that we do love you. So whatever you do, we'll be there. I said, okay, cool. That was that. All right, so Titus, you know, he's the uh, liaison and the counsel for Puber Ford, the uh, pharmaceutical company that the freaking Lancaster the Carlisle is suing them over. So... He talked to Lori because Lori, Lori is the daughter of Purefoy, Henry Purefoy, Hunter Purefoy. And um, so she's in there and she also the head of PR. So I was like, oh, public relations. All right. So basically, he was saying the ad campaigns you are doing is maybe a little bit unapologetic. So you need probably need to slow it down, something like that. And Lori said, I don't know who you are, what you need to tell me about. But I know what I have to do. And one thing, we are not, we are weak. We are not weak. So, we need to do it. We don't be apologizing for what we do. So, that's going to be staying there. He said, that's not a good move. So, she said, okay, whatever. You don't get to tell me what to do. At the end of the day, you just a counsel. My father, Henry, um, put you in here just because he felt sorry for you or whatever. But at the end of the day, you need to stay on your lane. He said, well, my lane is that your father gave me full access to know what's everything was going on. So I have to do what I have to do. And she was like, oh, well, I'm here for the long run, long haul. And I don't think you will be. I said, oh, girl, y'all is a shady ass motherfuckers. Lori, you is too self title. So later on, Titus talked to um, Lori and told Lori that he canceled those campaigns. And she said, ah, oh, you don't got the right to do that. He said, yes, I did it. And if you have a problem, you can go talk to your father. Because at the end of the day, you need to come through me and anything. I need to do my job. And my job is to do what I have to do. So I cancel that. You go to your father, you have a problem with me. But it's not going to happen. She said, okay, whatever. So she went to talk to her father. And basically saying to the father, like, you, can you trust Titus? You need to know. Can you trust him? Give him the full reins. Give him all the information. He needs to need to know to pull a full length. Because so, if he's getting a hold of all of the information, seeking the information that we supposed to know, that he ain't supposed to know. That he could do us in. And we don't need that. So basically, was, they got this little undertone racist kind of thing about him being black and stuff like that. And be representing them and knowing all their business. Proof for it is up to something. And Laura's not having it. So he said, lady, uh, listen. I have information and I only release information that I want him to know. So if, since I ain't give him that information, so you don't need to worry about that information. So you need to stay in your lane. It's a good decision that he did cancel your campaign because it's something like that. It's going to hurt us. So do what you have to do. So he basically annoyed with the daughter. He said, he was about to go black. He about to go fatherhood, father. He said, you better get your ass. So he said, oh, this understand just get that um just do what you got to do whatever and i just let you let you know that your father got this awesome and walked out he was about to curse her ass and tell her to get the hell out of his office and so that was that so we get stephanie and carly is having dinner right and um you know stephanie have a small talk with carly carly's on the instagram her phone searching through all lori's ass instagram posts looking at it liking shits and smiling about it and then Stephanie having a small talk with her and talking all about um, how's Khalil doing? How's it going on with him? And she said, there's nothing going on and stuff. And he said, can you put your phone down? Because she was, as Stephanie was talking to her, Carly was on her phone. He said, can you put the phone down so you can have a conversation with your mother? So she put it down. And then that's when they talk about different things. And he said, how's things going on with your schoolwork? Hope it's not preventing you from getting what you need to do. And she said, no, it's not preventing me. Because, you know, Stephanie is not here for Carly doing theater. So, he's basically saying theater is not for Carly. She said, I understand you talented young girl, something like that. But, at the end of the day, you is not Viola Davis and all that stuff. So, basically, hurt her feelings saying, bitch, you can be no, never a Viola Davis. So, you need to start with that little childish dream you have and get with the big program and doing law school. 
Cause she's like, I don't want your GPA being affected by you doing all these rehearsals and plays and you're not focused on your studies. She said, anybody worry about um, Viola Davis GPA when she make it big? She said, well, you're not Viola Davis. So I said, oh, that's a, I'm throwing. That's a low blow. So Carly got up and got upset. She says, Carly, apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean like that. I didn't mean like that. I apologize. I'm sorry. So Carly went to go to Lori's house, but she was about to knock on the door, but she's out against it and walked away. But Lori saw her at the um, peephole. I said, damn, he was waiting by the door check. You know that she was coming inside. So open the door. She said, what's going on? She said, listen, listen, I may like women and I might like girls, but I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in you. She said, okay, cool. And next minute you know, they started kissing. I said, oh, snap. I said, too bad, for, too bad for you not being interested in her. You was totally fell into that kiss that damn quickly, girl. So they started kissing. They started kissing. And then I think um, Carly's phone started vibrating or something. And she picked it up like she was about to call uh, like, um, talking to her father. And Carly said, no, 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 no. Like she was about to out her out or something like that. But she said, I'm playing, I'm playing, girl. I'm playing. See, it's not to there. So she sat down and said, listen, this is our secret. And I will never do that to you. So let's keep it to within us. And I got you. I will never hurt you. I said, girl, Lori. I said, Carly, open your eyes, girl. This girl is trying to play you. I think because y'all in opposing sides and team with this little lawsuit, Lori's doing every initiative she can to help her father out, help her business. And I think getting with you and trying to expose the secret as you being an undercover lay, uh, undercover lesbian and stuff. stuff that alone female so she could use that against you because i can't trust lori right now i can't trust her something tell me that she's going to use this against carly in the future for against the family so carly open your ears open your eyes all right so carly went home and stephanie was all dressed up on black and everything like when she going to mistress in the night and she was saying what's going on herself and trying to apologize and See where she was at. She said that she wants to call Lil. And he said, it's not, there's no feature with me and Carlyle. Because she would say, if you would call Lil, then it would be a great benefit for us. And now the form, uh, firm and so like that. So I said, oh, girl, it's always beneficial. It's what you want. She said, there's no feature in Khalil. I said, listen to your daughter. There's no feature with a man. There's a feature with a woman. I am. But uh, <laughs> so she said, a best cure with a bad attitude is sleep it off. So I like to sleep it off. And the kiss stuff. I said, oh, Stephanie is sniffing in the lab. See what she's doing. <laughs> oh, let's go closer. And you can tell she got perfume or something. Or I don't know. She said, oh, where well, you going? Well, I'm in the business meeting. I'm coming in the morning. I said, oh, okay. All right, so Titus was at a, um, met with a co-worker at the same firm that he's working with on the pool for it. It was another black person in there. So they could, let, gradually, they link up, right? So, eventually they link up. So they went to the jazz place, and it was nice, musical, good, and all that stuff. So he went to um, the guy that he went went to talk to. I think his lady that he saw. So he said, "Go ahead." So he went over there, sitting down, listening to the music, and then Stephanie came. I said, "Oh, Stephanie." So they sat down, and basically reminiscing about the old days. Cause they said before we could talk. Cause Stephanie said, "Listen, I really, I wrote you, I saw your." Um, your thing that you meant, your proposal, something like that, and I gotta have a bottle for you. But I can give you a preview if you wanna give it, you, give it to you. He said, no, no, I just wanna enjoy the day and this night. She said, okay, let me get a drink first. And she about to order, and he knew her favorite drink was Manhattan. I said, ew, Manhattan. <laughs> he said, Manhattan. And so, and then he ordered a bourbon for him. And then the women that's in college, about how they used to study, all that stuff. And she'd be throwing them back to me, hands all over the time. Over and throwing them back, throwing them back. And then um, they was talking about things. And they said, oh, uh, after the lobby, we go back to my house and be studying more. She said, we don't be studying at your house. I said, oh, okay, girl. All right, so while she turned her head around, he was staring at it and looking at it. I said, and he about to go over, touch her hair. I said, he's dreaming. He had to be daydreaming. Just like Stephanie had a daydream where she would get her box banged out in the tub. Speaking, Titus was daydreaming about to touch uh, Stephanie. And she turned around and he said, mm. I said, I knew it was a dream. A dream. So he got, up and got up he got up because he looked like he was about to be hot and bothered. And about to do um, four 
into the temptation and weakness. So he got up and went home and tried to work on the coffee table. I said, what the hell are you trying to work on? So you could know his mind was on somewhere. So, oh, I forgot. He was on the phone with Deja, his daughter, and Deja was telling him that he's, she's coming down for a concert. And whether you like it or not, she's coming down. He didn't give her permission to go, but she's coming down no matter what. So, so he was home fixing the coffee table. Amara came on. She said, what's going on? I haven't mentioned you fixing the coffee table, all that stuff. And she said, what's that at work? He said, yeah, he talking about the lobby and about things, all that stuff. And he said, let work be, leave work and work. And then when they all having a good time about the kids, that's the day she walked in. They was like, what the hell? She was like a freaking punk rockish, <laughs> golf there type of chick. I said, oh, so who, was turn, who turned that out? Because she said she's the only few black people in the predominantly white school, boarding school that she's went to. So she had to make some, some out of it. So the guy came in and he was golfed at the black, um, white as hell and all that stuff with the blue hair, spike hair. And they was like, what the fuck? What the fuck are we doing this? And basically said the boyfriend and he said, oh, what about this laws? And going to meet my girl and all that stuff. They went out. Gave her a curfew at midnight, basically, and then when they, she was out and going to a concert, they were playing Twister. It sounded like they were having sex or something like that, but they were playing Twister. I said, damn, Twister? I ain't have played that game for a long ass time. That was a fun game. It still looks fun, too, when you have people, a bunch of people together and having a good time and doing the Twister thing. That's a fun game. Like right, so that was that. Deja came on early. They said, honey, what you doing? What's going on? Here early, she said, well... The tickets that he bought was fake, so I had to come home. So, so they just talking, and they played Twister together. After that, Titus and Mar was laying there. She said, I missed it. He said, I'm so too. He said, you know what? I'm tired of living in the past. So now going in the future, I will never mention Damian Collins ever again. I said, oh, that is so nice. That is nice. So later on, speaking of Damian Collins, Stephanie went somewhere at the business meeting. The business meeting that she was supposed to be going, she went and met with Damian Collins. So he said, oh, she even meant something like that. She said, oh, turn around. And she said, oh, Damian Collins. They saw Damian Collins. I said, oh, okay, Amara. You got to taste of the man. It's like, I see why you try to see that. He, he flashed that little dimples and smile at Stephanie. And she was like, oh, Damian Collins. So I said, I guess um, Stephanie go hire Damien for something so she can get back at them. So if she bring him around, it will start more tension between Marla and Titus. I said, okay, Stephanie, you is a, ooh, you dirty girl. But I was ambitious, y'all. I tell you, it's really good. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you um, like what you see. Also share my videos. I appreciate everyone who has supported as well i'm a bit close to my hundred subscribers milestone so please support the brother and subscribe i promise i'm giving you more content once i get 100 subscribers i will do my first story time so let's see i hit that subscribe button that red subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you can be notified for all my channels so talk to y'all later peace